On today's episode, I'm going to compare an under three to an under three. What? This is actually an under three from six months ago that's been sitting in the box and I waited till now to put it together. This is a brand new Ender 3 straight from the Banggood USA warehouse. So this thing's only two weeks old. I want to see how different this is from this guy on today's Film of Friday. This week's Film of Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. I actually put these together side by side. I did one then the other, each step by step, following the instructions that came with the new one just so I could see if there was different screws or different parts between the two. And for the most part, they're identical. The same instructions work for both of them. Same screws, same position of the screws, everything. There was no difference there. There are a few future differences between these two even though they assembled the same. The first one is the bed material. The bed material on this guy is stuck right to the aluminum bed. So you'd have to peel that off if you want to replace it. This is what I've got on several of my Ender 3s. The Ender 3 Pro, a feature was that it had a magnetic base and you could pop it off and you could flex so it. This one has a removable bed. And a lot of people have told me they've got this under Ender 3. And it's got like a fiberglass material and you can flex it and pop the prints off. And then it's got the build material on top. What's nice about this is it can go to a higher temperature because it's held on by these spring clips, not magnets like the Ender 3 Pro. So this is actually better than what's on the Ender 3 Pro. What I have noticed though is the material on top is not nearly as good as the material here. After printing multiple prints I found on this one there were multiple spots where plastic wasn't sticking very good. And you could easily say well my bed's not level. But that's not it. It was this material. I found the same thing on my CR-10S Pro. I kept blaming the auto level. But as soon as I put some real build tack on it the problems went away and my auto level worked beautifully. So I think the material that they're shipping with these printers now, they must have went to a cheaper source or something. It's not nearly as good as what they used to have and certainly not as good as real build tech. So what I'm actually going to do is test this material versus real build tech. I'm going to stick that to the other side and I'll try an ABA and I'll see what the differences are. I know it's going to be better because I've already tested this on the CR-10S Pro. I'll put a link to uh, BuildTac material if you're not familiar with it. I'll put a link to it in the description below. If you buy through that link, it helps the channel, and then you're getting actual BuildTac. I took the covers off the electronics to check the differences. This one is running a 1.1.3 circuit board. I was able to connect to it with a terminal in Simplify 3D, and I could send an M503 code. It sent me all its settings back. The only thing I couldn't do is get its firmware level. I sent an M115, which should give me the firmware, and it didn't. It just, like, freezes up. So I don't know what firmware it's running. It's not showing up in the LCD. There's other ways I could probably get it, but uh, I don't have that yet. Now, this one is running a 1.1.4 circuit board, and I couldn't even connect to it with the terminal. I tried all different baud rates. It would not communicate. So I couldn't even send an M503 and verify that the settings are the same. I've been told this has new firmware versus this. Creality has a new firmware available on their website. I've tried that on one of my machines. I was not real happy with it, to be honest with you. And it didn't have thermal runaway protection enabled. So I actually tested thermal runaway protection on this guy because people told me if it's got the rubber sock, it's got thermal runaway protection. Not this one. The way I test for thermal runaway protection is I unscrew the thermistor from the heat block and just let it hang in air. That way there's no direct feedback of the temperature to the electronics. And then when I heat up the hot end, the thermal runaway protection should monitor it. And if it doesn't see a rise in temperature, which it won't because the thermistor is hanging in midair, if it doesn't see that by a certain time, it should shut down. This one didn't. It just kept getting hotter and hotter until I shut it down. So I don't believe thermal runaway protection is enabled on this machine. I know it's not on the earlier machines but it's definitely not here. So I believe I'm gonna do a follow-up video to show you how to update the firmware on these guys and enable thermal runaway protection on your Ender 3. Another thing I noticed is different is the wiring. On this one, the wiring is the same as my Ender 3s. It's a little bit short. So when this carriage is all the way to the top on a big print, that wiring is being pulled. On this one, they made the wiring much, much longer. So when it's all the way up, there's still slack in the wiring. That's a great improvement. Print quality between the two, I found that the newer one actually printed a little bit better. I printed a couple CHEP cubes, in fact several CHEP cubes, and every time it was a little bit smoother than this guy. 
and I printed the cat, the Creality cat, and it's just a little bit smoother on this guy. So I don't know if it's the firmware or if it's something that I'm just not noticing, but clearly this does print a little better than this guy. And you may be able to tune it up and make it better, but print quality wins on here. Unfortunately, Creality does not give a version number, so I can't tell you what version this is or what version this is. But I can tell you this is what Banggood is shipping right now from their U.S. warehouse. And if you want to buy through Amazon, well, now you at least know what to ask the Amazon seller. Does it have the rubber sock? Does it have the removable bed? And maybe what version of circuit board is in it? If they don't know that, maybe that's not the person to buy from. That's really what this is about. I want you to understand if you're going to get into 3D printing, and Ender 3 to me is a great low-cost way to start. It's not perfect, but for under $200, you really can't find a better printer. Even with the flaws that I picked out here, it's still an amazing printer for under 200 bucks. So at least now you know what you're buying, what to shop for. I hope this helped you out.